With the successful installation of two new masthead antennas last week came the discovery of plenty of dodgy wiring you kind of expect to find on a 35 year old boat. Um, previous owners has wired in these which are 230 volt wires rather than these which are 12 volt. So that's fab. However, this week the things we discovered really shocked us. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist that one. Anyway, stay tuned for some wall scraping, wire stripping, battery replacing antics. Let's go. We're Becca and Zach, a couple who recently, after years of dreaming, bought ourselves a beautiful 40-foot Colvic Victor sailboat. Life is short and the world is wide and there are so many lessons to be learned. Laughs and shared, people met, adventures had, and nautical miles to be sailed. And this is our way of sharing it all with you. Welcome to the Taily. Lovely doing it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a minefield. <laughs> Figured out. Wait, let me put you down and then ow! I can then talk to you. Okay, I'm talking to our good friend Martin, and he is a railway electrical engineer, which is a fantastic friend to have. <laughs> and just got ourselves multimeter, and I'm just figuring it out to be honest. So I'm having the issue at the moment of. Let me try and see if I can balance this so you can see what the battery is reading. I know. Is that a stupid idea? No, uh, it'll be fine. Okay, I'm going to hold this in my teeth and you pay attention to the screen, okay? Alright. You ready? Can you see the screen? Or is there a reflection on it? Keep an eye on it and I'm going to do this. Okay, do you see? Do <laughs> you see? like 0.7 or I don't know like an L or I don't know what you just saw 0.0 L 0.0 L so Martin just messaged something isn't quite right there oh because this means it's open circuit interesting you know who else helps in this situation dads Try pressing the range button. Try it again. Okay. Oh, there you go. 12.33. Ah. This is like learning a foreign language, Dad. Yeah. Number one is a starter. Shall I see what the starter battery says, just out of curiosity? Yeah. 14.63, which is basically what that's it says. That's, that's charging, then. Yeah, because the charger says 14.5 end, which means... Oh, God. What was just beeping at me? Did I hold it All on right. for too long? Don't no, no. Somewhere down the line, that's the sort of that's the sort of range you'd be expecting to see uh, on the other battery. Oh, so that one isn't charging. No. Okay. No. So that's, that's your problem, and it's likely to be something very simple. Maybe there's oh, a fuse. Maybe what? there's a switch. Sorry, did you hear that beeping? Freak me out. Yeah. What was that? The voltmeter turning off. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe it's not even connected to a charger. Uh, that's possible. So now we know the bow thruster isn't charging, Martin suggested to turn the engine on and see the voltmeter again with the isolator switch in one position and then the other position. So now I'm giving the engine some revs and we're going to see what that says. 12.3! Absolutely nothing! We're not charging ladies and gents! So there's one of the fuse switches which has a question mark on it, which isn't very handy. But what does that question mark mean? Blue? Question mark? <laughs> this is the fuse. Wait, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, that doesn't do anything. That's a good thing. That means it's broken. Oh, I'm just learning so much. <laughs> Life is so amazing, isn't it? Learning is wonderful. And I'll look back at this time in years to come and just giggle at myself and at life. You've just got to not take it too seriously because no one gets out alive anyway. User gone. <laughs> ah, it's so funny. It's just so funny. Uh, I've been ringing people and I've been googling and I've been reading books and and to think it was just the fuse. The fuse are gone. The fuse are gone. <laughs> to overcomplicate something so much. Oh, that's the first thing I should have checked. Oh my gosh, that's really tickled me. The thin wires with the fuse in. They're the charging wires, so if the fuse is blown, that's why 
it's not charging. Okay, 0.16. Significantly more bamboozled than before. I have just had the funniest day. Just the funniest day. So you know I found out after many, 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 many hours that this fuse had gone. I first, on the way to get new fuses, um, stopped by a guy who's a few boats along from us and he fishes a lot. Um, <laughs> and I said to him, this, isn't com this is completely irrelevant to the fuse situation, I just thought I'd share this little funny with you. But I said to him, well, what are you fishing for? And he said, look down in there, can you see all those fish? And he had some bread out there and stuff, like luring them in. Um, and I was like, oh wow, that's so cool, what fish are they? And he said, they're mullet. Okay, and I then went to my dad who likes fishing and I said, hi dad, the guy a few boats from us down in the marina, he's fishing for mutton. <laughs> and dad was like, you don't mean that, do you? <laughs> you don't mean he's fishing for sheep. <laughs> oh my god. Still not working. What am I doing wrong? Bad news. Hmm. Broke it straight away. Back to square one. Mark came over and he had a look at everything. Bound thruster is working. It's con contacting. I think that's what he said. It's touching, you can hear that, and it's trying, but it doesn't have enough power to go and actually make it work. What's happening, it will make sense now, but it's a just really frustrating problem to have. So what's happening is, the battery is super flat, but it's got a trickle charger to the, an engine battery um, with a diode, which means the current only goes one way. But what's happening is, because it's so dead, it's sucking as much as it can, which is more than five amps, which is why the fuse just keeps going. However, there's no charger, technical charger, for that battery. It's just trickle charging through 12 volt wiring, which is like a bit rubbish, really, because it can't pull as much from the engine batteries as it needs. I think I just need to shut my eyes and just... <sighs> if I have my eyes shut, nothing else can go wrong. And I won't discover any more issues and we'll sail happily into the sunset with a glass of champagne in our hand. Right? <laughs> Zach gets home right now and we're like, what's happened? And I'll be like, you know what daily happened? <laughs> It's funny, I wouldn't have it any other way. Like I am genuinely so happy and my brain is feels on fire, like in a really good way, if that's ever a good way of your brain being on fire, but it feels really happy. I'm learning so much and it's such cool stuff. It really is, it's bloody infuriating, but it's such cool stuff. Do oh. Now we leave it. It's the next day and I've just woken up and I went to check on the battery charger and guess what guys, we have left off. Okay, I just multimeter tested it and it is at 13.38, which is a fully charged battery. Yoohoo! Super, 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 super happy. Let's continue the day. What I'm doing right now is I am actually redoing the circuit diagram for our, for our battery situation. We had one written down and what they've done is they've included the charging for the valve thruster on the same diagram as kind of just the circuit diagram. So usually there's a charging diagram and a circuit diagram. One is like how things function and one is how things charge and they're different. Uh, but they've con kind of combined bits and pieces on one so it's made it a bit more complicated. So I'm going to go through and make a charging one and a operating one. At least I'm going to try because I think it's going to be complicated but we're going to give it a go. What are you doing Becca? I'm disconnecting the old batteries because we have a guy coming in a sec and we're getting four new domestic batteries and two new engine batteries and a new bow thruster battery so a lot of batteries and we've gone for AGM so yeah they should be a bit smaller but much heavier so I'm just disconnecting this whole mess and right now we're just going to replace them one by one exactly how they are but uh, in the next week we're going to go in and we're actually going to move all our domestic batteries out of here and, and just tidy everything up so that'll be really nice. It is a good battery locker, isn't it? It's actually really quite big. Yeah, it's massive. Engine batteries and then domestic will be in here. Yeah, we can, there's wiring holes already here as I well. I know. I think they're, I don't know where they're going, but we can, yeah, we'll be able to find loads of places to put these through. With a few more gadgets on the way, we decided to move our new domestic batteries into their very own cupboard. But first, it was time to rip out the horrible lining and make it a proper battery cupboard. <laughs> It's 
all go on the boat right now. Mum is down there about to paint um, our battery cupboard. Dad's out there cutting wood for the shelves in the battery cupboard. I am editing, so let's all go. Mum, if you move your hand towards the end of the thingy, yeah. yeah, then you get the momentum of the The problem is it's hammer. a right-handed hammer. Oh, really? They have those? Oh, Dad! <laughs> you couldn't resist that, could no. you? <laughs> <laughs> Yay, that's great. I reckon just a couple of screws with pilot pilot holes and a couple of screws. Wow. There we go. What a good job. Oh my gosh. You could literally sit on that and that's not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, Martin's not going anywhere. That's so good. Happy? Yeah, very. You stuck. Oh, my bum's stuck. Nice. Those batteries aren't going anywhere. Having them like that will be the best supported. Yeah, yeah that's fine. I'm happy with that. Because there's literally a bracket there, bracket there, bracket there, and a bracket there. We're going to need to figure out how to box them in. We'll have to just put a little bit of wood around them. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well done. Nice job. Yeah. That's good fun. So that was it just looks good, empty doesn't tub, it? With yeah. a pipe running down the right hand side. Oh, I can sit well. on one of those and it holds me. Yeah. That is amazing. Isn't the door shuts okay? Yeah. We haven't put the door on yet, but <laughs> it might be a bit you tight the door, but it's fine. Cut that yeah. little bit, do you think? That's fine. We might we might have to do that, That's but it should be brilliant. fine. Brilliant. I think that's pretty damn good. Lovely. How's that? Yeah, well done. Lovely. Yeah, do you like it? Yeah, very nice. One done. So many to go. <laughs> so easy. You know what we found in the headlining when we were um, taking it down? We found a torch. Someone had left a torch in the headlining. I found a torch in my boat as well. Really? Yeah. Maybe it, it's a sign. In the, um, mine was in the headlining as well. Maybe it's a lucky charm. We just don't know about it. And by taking it out with <laughs> ruining, we're doomed. We're actually ripping out a load of uh, wiring down here. So as you know, behind us is the new battery cupboard and we're basically, we have two switches. We have a domestic switch and an engine switch. Essentially that switch was for the engine one battery, engine two battery, both or off. And then there's a switch just in there, which is the domestic one, domestic two, and both. It's all been wired up wrong, basically. So that switch wasn't actually doing anything, kind of weird enough. And when we disconnected the domestic batteries, it was back feeding through this common wire here and sucking off those batteries through the domestic switch. So it was all, all of this in simple terms was wired wrong. So now I'm gonna take out all of this. We've already taken out so many redundant wires. There's some more house wire in there. We just love that. So yeah, we're just sorting it out, simplifying it and just, yeah, getting rid of all of this crap down here. Come on. Whoa. It's like Christmas. I don't know what you're going to find under all the... Or maybe more like pass the parcel. So there's no one else except me. And there's no music. <laughs> so nothing like pass the parcel, really. If I can just even improve one bit on this connector, then I am doing something right. Where are we? All of that is kind of spare at the moment. Is it? Is it all spare? Yeah. Martin has very kindly lent us his car for a few days. We feel so grateful about that uh, because my parents took my car at the week last weekend and we are going back to the battery shop now to just get some more battery stuff really because it is never ending at the moment uh, with the amount of stuff we need to just keep picking up even though we keep going we still need more and more and more so yeah we've done some more measurements and we are gonna head there and get all the rest of the lugs the rest of the wires we need to get a circuit breaker we need to get buzz bars there's all electrical shenanigans we need so 
that's where we're off to now. What are you doing, Becca? I'm skinning the ends of these 50 mil cables in order to put them on our domestic batteries as linking cables. But it is roasting, so we're kind of hiding down here because this is the coolest bit of the boat. But I'm hot, like 30 degrees today. It's so hot. We haven't, had, we haven't had 30 degree weather down here yet. No, this is it. This is like sticky, humid weather. Cracking on with it. I'm going to get it done by tonight. <laughs> the ever determined. Oh, f You're right. Yeah. Luckily it's just 12 volt, but that zap taught me a valuable lesson. Don't ever be careless with a spanner. Anyway, we continued wiring, wiring. We were running out of room in this little build hole. And more wiring. Oh, and a bit of drilling. Oh. Okay. Is it funny? No. Mm. By golly, I've gone from like zero electrics knowledge to wiring a boat, Zach. Yeah. That's pretty mad, isn't it? And voila. She was oh. complete. Oh, it's working, Zach. Is it? This is actually kind of cool. Look. Okay. See you next week.